All right, guys, welcome back to my reality wrap up. Today, I am doing the New Jersey Housewives. Woo! This might be a long one, but I'm going to go by talking about each character, as I like to call them, and then kind of sum up each person, what I think of the season and, you know, how things played out. And this is inclusive of the reunion uh, stuff that went down. So I want to start with Margaret. So um, Margaret, she's a very interesting character. I used to like her when she first came on the show. But as she started to peel back the layers and show her true colors, I quickly realized that she is a miserable person who I don't even know if she gets pleasure out of like bringing up the worst things in people's lives or I, I don't know. I don't know why she does it, but it's really disturbing, right? So for one, every season, she's like a frenemy of Teresa's, right? I don't get that. Either you want to be her friend or you don't. They get into arguments, they make up, and then Margaret talks trash about Teresa behind her back with Melissa and whoever else. And then smiles in her face and says, oh, yeah, 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 I want to be, I want to put it behind us, blah, 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 blah. But it's all nonsense, right? I also really think that Teresa should not have invited her to her wedding. That was a big mistake on Teresa's part. There is no way in hell that I would have invited that lady to my wedding. When she was saying last season that she... Uh, was just looking out for Teresa and that's why she was bringing up all this stuff she was hearing about Lou that is not what a friend does if a friend is concerned about someone that you're dating they're going to bring it to you in private if you say girl I got it I know about that it's not what it seems this is what it is then you let it go Teresa is a grown 50 plus year old woman with four kids and one marriage under her belt, okay? I think she got it. I think she knows what she's doing, right? So the whole season, last season, she was on this, oh, I'm just trying to help you, I'm just trying to help you, but you're trying to help me, but you're trying to trash the person that I'm dating, that I'm telling you that I'm happy with. That's not a friend. Um, The storyline with Margaret and Jennifer is played out at this point with the whole um. Jennifer's husband's cheating like for me I get that it's a reality show and I get that they have to bring the drama but I think it was really horrible for Margaret to bring that information onto the show and embarrass her like that now don't get me wrong Jennifer is reckless she talks a lot of trash and she will push a person to make them want to go in on you, right? But at the same time, she has kids and it was never something that was ever brought up. But the one thing that I love about Jennifer is Jennifer owns her stuff. She takes full responsibility for whatever's going on and she owns it. And she takes control of the narrative. And that's what I love about her. And other housewives need to um, pay attention. That's how you handle these, these trolls, these people who are trying to take you down with, with um, things that have happened in your life that you're not proud of, that you're not happy about. Don't let, them, don't let them own the narrative. You take control of it. And that's what I love about Jennifer. And that's what makes her a real good housewife. Margaret just looks, she says she's happy, she's married, her and her husband have this great relationship where they're so into each other and everything's perfect, I'm so happy, but I'm not getting that. Words and actions are not meeting, right? No one that is happy behaves like that. I get it, 
they're on a reality show and they're trying to keep their paychecks and stay relevant. But I feel like there's other ways to do that without going so low. She goes so low. Even at the reunion where she was accusing Louie of contacting her son at work, that was so far-fetched. Like, honestly, why would you bring something like that onto the reunion unless you had concrete facts and I don't think she had any facts because she never produced any facts all she just kept saying is like I have proof I have proof what proof do you have and there's all this spoofing going on and this ridiculous AI crap people are making videos of Michael Jackson singing singing a song that just came out last year like Come on, people. Technology has advanced and people are able to do things today that will blow your mind, right? So I don't really think Louie called her son at work because why would he call her son at work? Why? I think Louie has made a lot of mistakes this season. He really um, said too much. And did a lot of things that made him a target, right? And I feel like all those people that were on the other side of the couch got together and said, let's take Louie down. Let's say he did this. Let's say he did that. If we're all saying it, people are going to believe it. I really think that they did that because it's just ridiculous, you know? And Louie's misstep was bringing up that investigator's name. But as you all have heard, the investigator has been very vocal about um, saying that he has not investigated anybody and I even heard a video of him going in on um, Joe Gorga, you know, saying, basically, you don't want it with me and I did not investigate you, but keep talking and I will investigate you and you won't know what hit you, Okay. So clearly this guy has not really investigated anybody to the degree that they're saying that he did, right? Again, grasping at straws, trying to build up a storyline for next season. Let's go after Louie, right? It's so old and it's so tired. I would love to see Margaret gone. Like for me, she adds no value to the show. All she does is yell and scream with Jennifer, um, talk reckless about Teresa, and insert herself in the Gorga uh, Teresa drama, right? You have no business in the middle of that drama, but you consistently insert yourself. Stop inserting yourself because it's none of your business. So when she went to Teresa's wedding, did you guys see how she was like, oh, I, I feel so bad. Melissa's at home and, you know, uh, I feel like I should leave. I mean, I just don't feel bad. like, why are you here? Why, 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 why did you even go? If that's the way you feel like girl, bye. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Why would you go to somebody's wedding and then talk about how you feel bad that such, such and such wasn't invited? Then why are you even there? And then to leave early and then poor Jen Fessler had to leave the wedding early and not catch all the festivities. But on the real, Jen is dumb because I would have said, listen, I'm going to stay. I'll find my way home. Thanks for the ride here. Have a good night. Like, girl, please. Why would you leave the wedding early if you really didn't want to? Again, she is just, ugh. She really gets under my skin. I think her time on The Housewives has expired. She's really lame. I don't feel like she brings anything to the show. If anything, downgrade her to a friend like what they did to Jackie. Like make her a friend and see how that goes. Um that's all I'm going to say about Marge. I just feel like she's really pathetic and I don't feel like she's anybody's friend. Um you know, the stuff that she does for people good for you. Some people do stuff like that so people will look at them like they're such a good person, but deep down they're not a good person you know? So I don't really know. I, I, I'm, I'm not impressed. So let's move on. So Dolores, love Dolores. Uh, I like that Dolores can be cool with everyone, but also 
you know, like not she she's cool with everyone, but she kind of stays out of the drama. But what I don't like about Dolores is she rides that fence. Sometimes I feel like you should have an opinion, right? And I feel like her opinion sometimes is to stay out of it, right? Which I get because I wouldn't want to be in that mess either. I get it, right? But like when they asked her at the reunion, if she thought that question that Rachel Fuda asked on the bus about the girls being close was a setup question. And Dolores said, no, girl, come on. Like that was clearly a setup question. Why would Rachel, who claims that she's really good friends with Melissa, be asking Teresa if their kids are close? Ask your girl, why are you asking me? And that's not a question that you bring up when you know that there's tension and problems between the two ladies and their families, especially if you say you are my friend. So what was the point of that question? Come on now, stop. So like stuff like that, I look at Dolores with a crooked eye. Like, girl, you really trying to stay neutral. Like, come on, you, you, you doing too much with that. Like, keep it 100. It's okay to be cool with everybody, but make sure you let everybody know, listen, I see you. If that's how you want to play, play. But I'm not going to sit here and say that, no, I don't think that that was this when clearly it was, right? Now, maybe Dolores really didn't feel like it was a setup question, but come on, guys. It really, it was a setup question. Like, let's just keep it 100, like, please. So that's the only thing I don't like about Do Dolores. Even when she's in the after show um, sidebars, the way the side eyes that she gives Teresa, like, I would love to know what Dolores really thinks of everything. And I feel like we don't really get to know what she really thinks because she's keeping it politically correct. And she's just, you know, holding her friend down and not saying too much. I can respect it. But I would really love to know what, what her thoughts are. Another thing, I loved how on the reunion, she shut down everybody talking about her son and his experience working with Louie. Like one, I think that that was just a mom protecting her child and keeping her child out of the mess. And I would have done the same thing. Like, don't bring my son into this nonsense. My son is working. He's a good kid. He's minding his business and don't do it. I love that. And people were trying to come for her and, and, you know, say all this stuff because everybody wants Louis to be this bad guy. I don't know why everybody wants Louis to be this bad guy. It's crazy. I even feel like Andy kind of wants Louis to be a bad guy. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know, Louis. Well, hell, I don't know any of these people, but I'm just saying, like, I think Louis is getting a bad rep. Is it rap or rep? I don't know. He's getting a bad rep too soon right? He just got here. The beef between um, Teresa and the Gorgas have been going on for years, even before Louis's time, right? Louis just got here and they're taking his past and using that to determine who he is in this day. Now, we all have a past and I'm sure if people looked at our past and things that we have done, things that we have accepted, things that we have been a part of, um, if they use those things to define who we are today, we probably wouldn't be happy and we wouldn't feel good about that, right? So this is what they're, they're trying to do to this man, right? And I don't think it's right because nobody is perfect and we have all lived, made mistakes, done the wrong things, said the wrong things. And the only thing that we hope to do is evolve and do better. They're trying to not let him do that, right? Let's remind him of who he used to be with the hopes that he is still the same person and Teresa got a dud, right? Because everything is about, let's hate on Teresa. So I love that Dolores stuck up for her kid in that, um, in that situation, which also stuck up, stuck up for Louis and made it clear that they appreciated the opportunity and he was good. Love that. Now that is a ride or die friend. In that instance, Dolores 
held them down with that, you know? But there are instances where I just be like, oh God, Dolores, come on, girl. <laughs> you are riding the fence. So I don't know. I love that she found Polly. I'm really happy for her because she's right. She does deserve to live this part of her life happy and do what she wants to do. That other guy that she was with, he was a jackass. And I'm glad she finally left him and she's moved on. So I hope that maybe next season we can see Pauly get divorced, him and Dolores get engaged, and we can get into a little bit more of a personal side of Dolores. Because I feel like it's, I mean, she shares the stuff with her and Frank and the kids and things like that. But I really want to see more of like her relationship with Pauly, you know, I don't know, some more stuff like that. because. Honestly, what else is there? But I would love to see that. I would love to see Dolores get her happily ever after, right? Put it like that. And we all discovered that Paulie's still married. So we really want to know what's going on with that. Why are we not getting divorced? When are we getting divorced? Let's, let's get a move on it, okay? So next, Jackie. I do not like her. Um, She came in, she was like a friend, I think this season. And she immediately started going after Danielle, right? And I think she was doing that to be, um, to kind of maybe show her worth that I do belong here. I do, I, I should have a place on this cast and not just a friend. Like I, I want my job back, right? So that's what I was getting. I mean, I don't really know if she was, I guess she was demoted, right? Cause she wasn't in the, um, the, cast photo so she was like a friend so I think she really turned it up to kind of say I belong here put me back on the cast but that to me was just so trash what she did like it's the classic you know female hateration nonsense like I was not feeling it because it, it came out of left field and it was it was unwarranted you know also, she's so fake because she, her and Teresa made up, but when she's with Melissa and Margaret, she's constantly taking shots at Teresa and she's talking trash about Louie and his, his, his company, the money that he has. Somebody said, oh, well, I think he has a lot of money. He gave those, um, Teresa's daughter's Cartier, um, gifts for Christmas. She's like, oh, those were fake. I could tell that the, um, they're fake. Wow. That like who says that? Even if you think they're fake, why would you say that? That just sounds it sounds so haterish. You know? Like it is if you're happy, you're you're eating, right? You're eating and you're you're feeling good, your kids are good, your marriage is good, you got money, you're good. Why are you so concerned about someone else giving fake or real Cartier or whatever they're doing? Like, why, why would you need to make a comment like that? Only a miserable person would say something like that. Again, these women are pretending that they're living the lives that they want to be living. And clearly something is missing deep down in their souls. So they have to project this ugliness onto other people. Listen, you can be on a reality show and throw shade and not be so nasty with it. You know, you can do it in a fun way. These ladies don't know how to do that. They go right to the bottom. It's really sickening. Me, I couldn't do that. Like I, I would never say, oh, it looks like it was fake anyway. I, oh, really? He has money. Where does he have money from? Where is it coming from? Where? Like the way she talks, the energy that she puts behind it, it's, it's just seems like it's coming from a negative place. Like when you watch Housewives of Atlanta and Sheree throws shade or Kenya throws shade and candy, the way they do it is fun and jovial and like, you know, whatever, unless there's like a underlying beef going on, then you can see the tension, right? But if it's just like, whatever we're doing it for the show is for jokes or whatever the energy behind the joke or what they say is not like 
nasty, you know, it's just kind of light. But the way that she was talking and the energy that she puts behind what she says about Teresa and her husband is very vile and negative. So I would like to see her gone. I don't want to see her face next season because again, she brings nothing to the show either. Moving on. Jennifer. I like Jennifer. Um, I just think Jennifer needs to tone it down a little bit. Her mouth is really reckless. And you got to understand if you have a reckless mouth, when people come for you, they're going to come hard, right? So if they come hard, you got to be able to take it because you were reckless. And I think what happens is when people come for Jennifer, she gets upset that they're coming for her and she just, she kind of has like a meltdown, right? But Jen, remember, girl, you was reckless, really reckless with the mouth, sweetie, you were. So they're going to come for you and they're going to come barrels loaded. <laughs> they're going to come hard. So if you don't want people coming for you like that, in the words of the late, great Whitney Houston, watch what you say, baby girl, watch what you say. Um, I love that her and her husband are working on their marriage. She made a comment at the reunion that I really loved and I think is real. She said that she always talks about how her husband comes home and goes to the pool house. And of course, Margaret and others were trying to make it seem like he didn't want to be around her. That's why he's going to the pool house and he hates his life and blah, blah, blah. But what she said was that he works a very stressful job. And when he comes home, he just wants to unwind. I think he actually said this. I don't know. It was a combination of them both. So he goes to the pool house. This is his, his place of peace and relaxation to unwind from his day before he can immerse himself within with his family. I'm married. I've been married for 14 years, right? With my husband for about 20 years. 21 years. It'll be 21 years this year. And same thing. He used to tell me when he comes home, he doesn't want to like talk, have a conversation, nothing. He just wants to go get changed, maybe take a shower and just relax and just do something that's relaxing for him so he can decompress from his day. Right. And once he has had that time to himself, then he can emerge for conversation about whatever the kid bills the home you know what we're doing this weekend next weekend next week vacations whatever so I totally get that and I understand it and any woman who is in a relationship or a marriage with another person I think understands that as well and if you don't maybe you should take some points because everybody needs that, okay? Even when you're working all day and you come home, you don't want kids screaming in your face, oh, what's for dinner? Where are we going at? No, you need a moment, right? You need a minute. So I think that that was a great explanation of why he spent so much time in the pool house. It's his place of peace. So I think instead of people trying to dissect her marriage and say that it's a horrible marriage, that they should back up a little bit. Now, do they need some work? Yeah, they do, right? Because the communication is not there. But again, Jennifer is very aggressive. She's very aggressive. And you know the way that she handles situations, I think she needs to take a step back and um, listen to her husband and allow him to speak and take in what he's saying. A lot of times people who are A-type personalities, they, um, they don't listen. They don't listen to others, you know, because it's their way or the highway or just their way or why can't it be my way? And they don't really listen to the other person's perspective or what works for them. So I think she needs to do a little bit of that and I think of I think they'll be fine. I mean, they survived infidelity. My God, they should be fine. So let's let's pray for them. I like Jennifer. I think she's good for the show. And I love how she kept it real. This is another thing. I, Jennifer does not lie. 
I don't think Jennifer lies. Margaret's a liar. Jackie is fake. Um, but I don't think Jennifer lies, right? Because remember when on the reunion they were talking about why did you, why did you not tell Danielle that Melissa already knew about the cheating rumor? And what did um Jennifer say? Because this is a reality show and the way it was playing out was, you know, I just went with the way that it was playing out. She kept it 100. Even though you're not supposed to say that, she had nothing else. That was why she did it. She was trying to play the game, right? Because honestly, I feel like one, she, when she told Danielle, she should have just said, okay, let me back up. I think that they told Danielle that because they were trying to prove their point about Margaret, right? We told you she can't be trusted. We told you she has an arsenal on everyone. Here's how we know. Besides what she's done to us, her best friend, who she's no longer friends with, told us all this stuff. And to put the icing on the cake, her bestie, Melissa, doesn't know that she told her, her friend that Melissa made out with some guy, right? So if she's such a good person, and if she has her friends back, and she doesn't have secrets on everybody, why would she have said that? I think they were trying to drive their point home about Margaret, and that's why they shared that information with Danielle. But what they should have done was said, Melissa already knows about this, but she's so blind that she doesn't even realize how toxic Mar Margaret is, right? But they didn't say that. So they just left it as, this is how bad she is. Because I again, I think they were trying to paint the picture that Margaret is evil, right? So they use that. And if they would have told her that Melissa already knew, it kind of would have watered down the point that they were trying to drive home. So that's why I think that they did this. But everybody has their own theory and, you know, whatever. So anyway... I love that Jennifer keeps it real. I feel like we need her. We need her energy and um, I would like to see her stay. Now let's talk a little bit about the new girls, Rachel Fuda. So Rachel Fuda, I don't like how she brought up that whole adoption thing um, with her son on TV because for one, um, it's private, right? He's still in high school. That's putting all his business in the street. I mean, I don't know how much of his business is already in the street because sometimes kids talk and they're very uh, open about their lives and they share with their friends and people know. But this really put it on front street, right? And I think it's 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 a touchy situation for his real his biological mom, who clearly is, you know, suffering from certain situations where she just can't get it together or whatever the situation is right so I don't like that she brought that on the show and I really feel like she did it because she knew that it was going to be an interesting storyline for her and that would probably keep her relevant I don't feel like it was done out of love and oh uh, blah 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 like that's something that you could have handled private and you could have said, you know, um, after it was done, that I'm so happy that, you know, we, she didn't have to say that. That's nobody's damn business. I, I didn't like it. No, I don't care. And I didn't like that she went back and told them, uh, Margaret, that Danielle said that she had an arsenal or whatever the hell she said, right? Because Danielle really was just having a conversation with Rachel as the new girl, like, hey, we're new girls. 
we got to get to know these people. And this is what I'm hearing. And I'm feeling like it might be true, right? She was just having a conversation. Rachel didn't need to take that conversation anywhere. But again, the new girls are always so thirsty to prove their worth when they come on the show, right? So she did exactly what most newbies have done on these shows, right? So I don't know. It is what it is. Um, her husband, he irritates me, not only the way that he looks, but just everything like I cannot. And then at the reunion, when he accused Louie of finding his, his, um, kid's mom and, and whatever setting investigation, like, bro, I don't know if you know, but anybody can find out anybody that's in prison. All you got to do is Google. Okay. All you need is a name and you can, and if you know what prison they're in, you can find that information. It's public information. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about acting like, was she like a top secret agent for the United States where she's in some top secret facility under a, a alias or something? No, bro. I think she's just a regular Joe or a regular Joanne in prison and you and your wife brought this to TV and people got interested and wanted to see what the mom looks like, find out what she's in prison for. And, and they looked it up. Like, that's what happens when you come on reality TV, you put your business in the street and people dig deeper and find out more and more about you. So that's why I say it wasn't a good idea for her to bring her son's business on TV like that, it wasn't necessary, but people will do anything and everything for fame and notoriety, right? So um, you put that out there. So there you go. Everybody was looking. I, I don't think any, I don't think uh, Louis had to do anything. Okay. Somebody probably came to him and said, yo, I know who his, his baby mother is. And I know what jail she's in too. I found it. Right everybody was looking. I was wondering. I mean, I didn't look because I really don't care, but I was wondering. And I was watching something else and they were talking about, um, I think she did an interview. I think she gave an interview and was saying how she didn't know anything about this. And um, she watches the show because then she can see her son and all types of stuff. So She's out here and she's she's talking, okay? So stop blaming this on Lou and trying to, you know, form an alliance with that side of the couch. It, it's ridiculous. And for a man, that was extra. I, I didn't like that. I can't stand men that have too much bitch assness in them. Like, listen, keep it to a minimum. It's not cute. So I'm gonna go forward. Danielle. I like Danielle, but Danielle, she is doing the most. At the party at the end of the season, honey, girl, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. back it up. You're doing too much. Tone it down just a little bit, just a little bit. I understand that that's your personality. You're out there. You're like loud. You're crazy and zany, but you need to reel it in a little bit. It's giving it's giving, I'm thirsty. Um, I, I'm trying, I'm, it's giving, I, look at me, look at me. I need attention. I, I'm, you know, like, it's just giving, I'm doing too much. That's what it's giving, too much. So I would say, I think it would be good to bring her back for next season, but I think she just needs to tone it down a little bit and find her, find her, 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 her place. You know, you don't need to be so extra and so wild, the bending over and slapping her butt and all this like, girl, that come on, stop. You, you're doing too much. Even at the reunion, my balls drag out the dog. Like, oh, gosh, she gives me a headache. Like, it's too much. Tone it down. Act like a lady and, you know, find your place. But I, I like her. I like her energy and I like that she doesn't take anybody's crap. Um, I don't know if it was such a good idea to bring up the whole situation about her and her brother not speaking, but I guess people would have found out anyway, but I think she probably should have just let that come out. And then 
if when it came out, then she should have played off of that. You know what I'm saying? And that's just my my thought, you know, like let somebody else bring it up and then use that as a storyline. But I don't think she needed to bring that to the table day one. You know, sometimes let them peel back the layers. Um, another thing is it wasn't her place to go and tell Melissa anything. Her and Melissa are not that close. So that to me is a red flag. Why are you running your mouth? I can't stand these women who come on here and they run their mouth constantly. Not everything needs to be repeated. Pick and choose what you repeat. What is the point of telling Melissa that somebody said that she made out with somebody? Who cares? Like, does anybody really believe that? Nobody believes that. Nobody. I don't believe it. Y'all don't believe it. Nobody believes that Melissa made out with anybody. It's stupid, okay? So I think it was ridiculous and it was unnecessary. Another unnecessary thing that she did was when Melissa um, had the little um, pop-up shop for her at the store, saying that Melissa didn't pay for something that she liked was foul. I didn't like that either. Like she partnered with you, had the pop-up. I understand that you took the L and she probably came up more so than you but sometimes you can't see the benefits of um something that you do in that very moment maybe the vet benefits will come a little bit later so if someone puts their hand out to help you and you accept the help be gracious be respectful and just say thank you. And if you gave her something and she didn't pay for it, it's fine. You know, let her have it. You don't need to call her out and you don't need to say that she didn't pay for it and blah, blah, blah. Especially something of um, the value that it was. I think it was like 20 something dollars or something like that. Girl, come on. She did you a favor bringing you in her store and doing a pop-up. So that was one collaboration. You never know what could come out of that down the line. You know, someone might have seen it and then will call you months later or whatever. So be very careful about um, looking, a, let me not try to say that I'm saying, cause I always mess up saying, so I'm just gonna skip that. Let me not do it. So just be careful about, being so critical of people who are trying to help you, even though they might be benefiting, still be careful. That's what I'll say about that. Okay, Jen Fessler. I like Jen. I think Jen is fresh air. I think she's her energy is light. It's fun. I hate that she got dragged because she said she slept with James Gallofini. Like people, come on. Like just because he's dead, doesn't mean that no one can ever talk about him and what he did it in, in his life when he was alive. It's her story too, okay? So how dare you guys try to gag order her about her experience with this man? Like, please. And before his wife, he had a past. So let's not get crazy. Like the, it was crazy how they were dragging her about that. I think it was so funny and I think it was cute. I like the energy that she brings to the show. It's just light and it needs it sometimes. So I hope they keep her as a friend. I would really like to, you know, see her come on again. A lot of people were saying that she seemed very thirsty, impressed and whatever. I don't think so. I think she's just fun and she's just having a good time. And she's sharing a little bit about herself with everyone and trying to lighten up the mood, you know? So uh, yeah, I like Jen. So now on to Melissa. Yeah. So Melissa, oh child. Mm. For me, she's giving me nothing. Like I don't like I I don't know. I don't what is her story? Like what is what is her storyline? I don't see anything going on with her except this ridiculous um exhausting feud with her sister-in-law, right? That's all that they ever talk about. Um, I don't see anything. Every once in a while, she'll be like a bone carrier and she'll stir up some nonsense. 
carrying a bone. But other than that, nothing is jumping out at me except the feud with Teresa. Now for one, let's talk about the time where she went to the party at Teresa's house, the love party. And Teresa said, I want to make a toast to all of everybody here. Thank you for being here to my um my chosen family, right? And she made a big deal about that statement. Now, if I'm at a party um, that my sister-in-law is hosting and there are people there that are her friends and people that are there from her husband's side or her fiance's side, and she makes a toast and says, thank you, everyone. I love everybody here. And to my chosen family, thank you. I love you. Why the hell would I take that personal? I am there because I am her extended family through marriage with her brother. And there are people here that she considers like family who are probably her friends. So why is that offensive? It's not offensive, but she's always reaching for the stars, okay? That was one. Two, at the bridal shower, where she thanked the people, you know, whoever she thanked. Did Melissa help with the bridal shower? No. Did Melissa buy food? No. Did Melissa bring flowers? I didn't see. Well, so what did Melissa do where she needed a personal thank you? Did Melissa convince her husband to show up for the events and festivities that they were invited to? No. So again, what 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 should she have gotten a thank you for? For just existing? No, she was thanking people who were relevant to that event and also shouting out her new sister-in-laws and you know like peeps. What the hell? Why are you taking that so personal? And then when they were in Ireland and Melissa goes to the room and calls Joe and says, oh, she brought up Antonia and blah, blah, blah. And I don't even think we should go to the wedding. I don't, I didn't even think we're wanted at the wedding. Guys, that was her planting her final seed. Let's just have a serious conversation here for one second. We as women, we plant seeds in our spouse's heads. We do, okay? So when when you hear people say that Melissa is the problem, Melissa is the problem because at the end of the day, the man is the head, but the woman is the neck. Without the neck, the man can't turn his head left or right. And if you're always in your husband's ear, low-grade hating, low-grade complaining, low-grade acting like you got a problem, he's gonna feel like he has to do something about it to make you feel better, right? So this is what she's been doing all of these years, and this is the problem. There is no reason why I would be upset and I'm not Italian. Maybe this is a cultural thing, right? There's no reason that I would be upset that my 50 plus sister-in-law who is getting married for the second time did not ask me to be a part of her wedding party. My husband has a sister. She got married and she didn't ask me to be a part of the wedding party. I, 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 I wasn't mad. She didn't ask my daughter to be in the wedding. That's her only niece. I, I wasn't mad. She had her kids in the wedding and herself. Who the hell cares? We went, we supported, we ate, we drank, and we went the hell home. Why would I be in my husband's ear about his sister not putting me in his wedding and our daughter in the wedding? Like, who cares? I don't care. It ain't my damn wedding. Why am I going to be about not having to buy a dress and buy shoes and go to all these damn events and spend money and do this. Like, no, I'm good. So think about that for a moment. It's ridiculous. 
her brother spazzing, talking about, oh, you didn't invite my in-laws to your wedding. Again, why does his in-laws need to be invited to his sister's wedding? Because they were cool with your parents? I'm sorry, your parents weren't having a party. It was your sister that was having a wedding. Now, if his parents were alive and they were having like a 80th birthday party, then absolutely her her family should be invited because they had a relationship. But if this is Teresa's wedding, why the hell should she invite her brother's in-laws to her wedding if they don't all have a great relationship? It makes no sense. I had a housewarming when we bought our first house and my sister's husband has like a big family. I've met all his sisters all his nieces, nephews, everyone. I only had a relationship with one of his sisters that I would consider, you know, like someone that I was cool with, you know, that was, it was more than a cordial relationship. I invited her to my housewarming. I didn't invite all his other family members. For what? It makes no sense. It's just ridiculous. So, I mean... Again, people, let's put things into perspective. It's it's dumb. Melissa is always reaching and she's always doing the most, right? How about you focus on your life and bring the cameras into what's going on in your life? Let's 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 find out about what you're trying to do, what you're trying to build for yourself. We want to know that. Like, you know, let's find out about you. Why are you constantly trying to ride Teresa's coattail and create drama that doesn't need to be there for a storyline? At that finale party where she jumped up and started walling out about the stupid rumor and how Louie brought her husband to the house. And girl, if you felt that strongly about it, why didn't you address it when it happened weeks ago? Like, why are you, or even months ago? Because remember, that stuff is the way they shoot and all that stuff. It, it's like, honey, like if it was that serious, why didn't you bring it up then? You could have called Teresa and said, hey, I don't appreciate you guys talking to Joe about this without me. Like it's it's giving like that you guys are doing something shady, but it's so stupid. It was such a stupid rumor. Nobody believes it, but she just created this excitement at the end to get into an argument. So like, oh, it could be like this finale. Like, oh my God, like girl, Please, it's tired. It's whack. You should be exhausted, okay? Because I'm exhausted. And at the reunion, talking over Teresa while she's trying to talk to her brother, why are you inserting yourself? Let them argue. Let them have their conversation. Let them talk it out. Let them do what they need to do. There's no way that I would be interjecting if my husband and his sister were like arguing. No, let them have their argument. Let them say what they got to say. And then if it, if it gets too crazy, then you say, babe, it, you, you got to chill. Let's go. Let's go home. And let's, you know what I mean? But don't put yourself in the middle. Stop talking reckless to her. You're putting yourself in the middle for no reason. And Joe accusing Gia of saying that he should leave Melissa. Why would Gia say that? Gia knows he ain't leaving no Melissa. Gia is a really smart young woman, please. I don't think Gia said that. I think Gia said something and he twisted it and he's trying to use that. But who does that to their niece? Like what kind of man does that? Bitch assness, again with the bitch assness. I'm telling you, it, it's terrible. The reunion for me was exhausting. I'm over it. I would love to see either Melissa or Teresa leave the housewife of New Jersey and for them to bring in some new people, right? I would love to see Teresa do her own thing where she can really be herself. This is a great segue into the next person that I wanna talk about, which is Teresa. Um, also, Guys, did you see how when her, uh, Teresa and Margaret got into it and Margaret called her a criminal? Did you see the way that she looked when she called her a criminal? That is the, that, when you look up frenemy, 
that picture should be in the in the dictionary under friend of me because that that is what a person who pretends to be your friend but secretly hates you looks like in that moment I was like damn she would never be able to talk to me anymore on no friend level like you crazy like absolutely not right you can't mess with people who are constantly throwing your downfalls into your face and using them to like hurt you. Like that's not a friend in no way, shape or form. I think Teresa needs to focus on Teresa. I love that she's closing this chapter. I don't think Teresa is perfect. I think Teresa has a lot of ways about her that she needs to check, right? I feel like the blind loyalty that she wants from people is ridiculous, you know, but I love that she doesn't try it with Dolores. So that's why I say that I love that Dolores is cool with everybody and nobody's going to tell Dol Dolores who to be friends with or how to be, right? And I love that Teresa allows Dolores to be, right? I just wish that she would extend that to everyone right? Um, I think sometimes she holds some people to like, you know, to some standard that's just ridiculous, right? You can't expect for people to only be your friend and not entertain other people or whatever. No, you want friends that respect you, love you, and will hold you down. If somebody is talking reckless about you that they know, they're going to check them. You know what I'm saying? example, Melissa, that being her sister-in-law, she should not be hanging out with people who are always talking reckless about Teresa. Now, if you're friends with them, they should know not to do that in front of you because they should know that, oh, Melissa's not going for it. She's going to check us. She's not going to let us talk about Teresa like that, right? Even if you can't stand your sister-in-law, it's not okay to let other people talk trash about her in front of you. It's just not. You need to check them. So that's why I think Teresa's, I mean, Melissa is a horrible sister-in-law and I don't like her. Like, it's just not cute. And I'm saying I don't like her as the, the person on Real Housewives of New Jersey. Guys, I don't know these people. So the, the comments and the opinions that I have about them are based on the characters that they play on the Real Housewives of New Jersey. I'm just talking about what I see. This is not personal because I don't know these people personally. And they may be lovely in real life, right? But for TV and their paychecks, they do different things. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there. Um, I would love to see Teresa get a spinoff and I would love to see her really blossom and, and, you know, like really see who she is at this stage in her life, see what she's working on, how she's building up an empire for herself. Now that she's in a new marriage, she has these daughters who are um, graduating high school and going off into college. She's a stepmom. Like we want to see like that aspect of her life, you know, the trials and tribulations of, you know, marriage the second time around and just trying to figure out how to uh, build a life for yourself that no one can take away from you. That's what I would love to see for Teresa. Um, all this drama about her brother is old, is stale, and we're tired of it. And I'm not the only one, like everybody's tired of it. So I would really love to see it like just move on. So if she doesn't go, then they need to get rid of Melissa and Margaret and they need to bring in two new new faces. I think the cast that they have now with Rachel and um, Danielle and Jen, I think this is new, fresh energy, right? Um, and I think, I think they're fine. I, I, I would like to see another season of them, but without Margaret and without Melissa. They just bring a stale old energy to the show that needs to, it needs to go. It needs to end. It's old, right? Um, Louis, I hope that he has learned a valuable lesson from watching back the season. He needs to learn how to control himself, control his temper and watch what he says. Stop saying dumb stuff. The thing about the pajamas, like I get what you you were trying to say, but 
that's private. Leave that between you and Teresa and the kids. Like you don't need to tell her brother that because that's not going to make him feel warm and fuzzy. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about what you're saying before you say it, because you're going to look crazy. You're on national TV. Like, come on. I don't know about Louie. I don't know if he's good or bad for Teresa. I don't know. Right. I pray that this works out for her. I pray that it's a good relationship. I pray that she gets her happily ever after because I feel like we all deserve that. So I hope that this guy is who he says he is and he has what he says he has and it's legit and it can't be rocked or shaken. That's what I hope for her. Um, I think everybody's coming for him and I think if they keep the same cast, Next season, we're going to be looking at a smear campaign against Louie, and it's going to be the same nonsense all over again, right? So until T Teresa literally has a nervous breakdown, right? So I really think that they need to switch things up. It's old. Um, I would love to hear what you guys think. Drop some comments. Let me know what you thought of this wrap up. If you agree, if you disagree. Follow me on Instagram. I'm at the Oh Hell No podcast. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do these wrap ups on all the reality shows because I watch everything. Well, almost everything. I'm going to be doing a wrap up on, I don't even know what it's selling sunset. I just started watching that. So I don't know if you guys watch that, but I started watching it and I, I'm hooked. So I have some things to say about that too. Anyway, guys, it's been fun. I hope you enjoyed my wrap up. Have an amazing day.